section 3.6 is an introduction of functions. We're going to first start by saying a relation is a set of ordered pairs. Okay, there's four ways to express relations. There's our ordered pair, which is just our x, y coordinates. There's maps that look similar like this, and this is the ordered pair 2, 3. This represents the ordered pair 1, 4, and this represents the ordered pair 5, 5. There's graphs. And then there's also equations. So that's four different ways we're going to look at. An ordered pair, uh, the domain, the independent variable, is the first number, usually the x values. And the range, which is the dependent variable, is the second number or the y values most often. Okay, so there's different ways that um, those are expressed. First thing we're going to do is determine the domain and range of each function. Okay, in number one, we're looking at the relation with the ordered pairs 2, 3, 2, 4, 0, negative 1, and 3, negative 1. To name the domain, we want to name all the first coordinates, which we also know as the x values. Now, because, negative, um, because positive 2 is twice, I don't have to write the multiples. I just need to represent one of each, and that's through brackets. The range is going to be our y values or our second coordinates, that's going to be a 3, a 4, a negative 1, and negative 1 again, so I don't have to repeat it. Number 2, we're looking at a mapping, and if it helps to write your mappings out as ordered pairs, then that may help you to see your domain and range. That may make it a little bit easier. So when we name our domain in number 2, our domain is going to be negative 2, 0, and then 0 again. But like we said, we only have to list it one time. And then our range is just going to be our y values. So it's 3, 4, and 5. Our problem number 3 is when we're given a graph with some ordered pairs on it, and hopefully you can see those labeled, we need to name all of our x values. So that's going to be a negative 5 here, a 1 here, and a 2 there. Our range is going to be all of our y values in each ordered pair, so it's going to be 0, negative 2, and positive 2. So domain and range is a fairly basic idea. And now we're going to talk about a function. A function is a special relation in which every x value corresponds to exactly one y value. If that's somewhat confusing, the main thing you need to remember is that the domain, which is your x values, cannot be repeated. So in the next ones, we're going to look at each type of relation and determine whether it's a function. And we'll say, yes, it's a function, or no, it is not. Now, we said our focus was going to be our x values, so that's negative 2, positive 2, negative 3, and 9. So every x value is mapped with exactly one y value, and none of the x's repeat. So because none of the x's repeat, yes, this is a function. Number 2, I'm going to write these out as ordered pairs just for the sake of seeing. So 4 is also mapped with 6. Negative 1 is mapped with 0, and we said we want to make sure all of our x values do not repeat. So because of that right there, this fails to be a function. No, this is not. Number 3, this is actually a graph, and there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can graph it and see the sketch of it, or we can make as an xy table and make substitutions to try to get an idea of what this looks like. So because my x value is over here. I'm going to choose different values for x. So I'm just going to pick any. I can choose big, huge numbers. I can pick whatever numbers I want. But to keep it simple, I'm going to pick these three right here. So when I substitute those values in, y equals 2. First time, I want to substitute a negative 1 in. Well, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. The next time, I want to substitute a 0 in. Well, 2 times 0 is 0. 
So then the third time, say y equals 2 times, I'm going to substitute a 1 in. Well, 2 times 1 is 2. So when we look at these, and we can see that none of the x values are repeating, none of the y values. Therefore, when we see, we would assume that just by looking at this portion of it, that um, yes, this is a function. And y equals 2x is going to be a straight line. All right, number four. If I take this same idea, it's an x, y value, okay, and I'm going to put values for y this time since the y is there. So I'm going to pick just simple ones, negative 1, 0, and 1 to keep this simple. And everywhere y is at, I'm going to put um, x equals. Now where y is at, I'm going to substitute that in when I said negative 1, negative 1 squared. Well, negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Now I'm going to substitute in 0 in place of y. So since I'm going to say y equals 0 this time, so I'll put a 0 there. And we say 0 squared is 0. And then on the last substitution, I want to substitute 1 in for y because this is 1. And so I'm going to have 1 squared is 1. Now when I go back and look at my definition of a function, it says none of the x values, none of your domains can repeat, and I can see in this one, this x value is paired with negative 1, this x value is paired with positive 1, so this one fails to be a function, so we have this one fails, this one is a function, we said when these were the same, no, and then the first one we said was yes. Most often we see equations that look like this format, y equals 2x plus 3. Today I'm going to introduce to you function notation, which looks very similar except for f of x equals 2x plus 3. Well, if you notice, the only difference is that instead of saying y equals, we said f of x. So they're kind of like hand in hand. So if it gets confusing, you can kind of look at f of x equations like y equals. So in the first one we said if g of x, which it doesn't matter if it says p of x, f of x, h of x, it's just different variables. If g of x equals 3x minus 2, it says find g of 1. Well g of 1, all it's really asking us to do is in the g function, substitute everywhere x is at with a 1. So basically what we need to do is write our equation. Everywhere x is at, we want to put in a 1. And then we're going to use order of operations to solve. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So g of 1 equals 1. And that's pretty basic. Number 2 is a little bit more complicated because it has an x squared term in it. But we still work it the same way. We said if f of x equals 7x squared minus 3x plus 1, find f of negative 2. That means everywhere x is at, I'm going to put a parenthesis, and then I'm going to go back and substitute a negative 2 everywhere x is at. And then we perform order of operations. Now parentheses and exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we have to do this first, negative 2 squared is a positive 4. And I'm just going to bring down the 7. Negative 3 times a negative 2 is a positive 6. Multiplication comes next. 4 times 7 is 28. Plus 6 plus 1 is going to be 35.